Hey everyone, John Lorden here. Thank you for joining me on a very special episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. This is my first video into this case. However, it's not the first video. Um, well, it's my first searchlight video into this case. I did do a Johnny vlogs, and also this is a collaboration with Danielle Hallen. Uh, you should really watch those videos before you watch this one. So I have links to those in the description box below. You can go and check those out for yourself. Um, let me just start this video by saying I think that this is going to be uh, a two-parter. Uh, I think we're going to have part of the interview today and part of the interview tomorrow. I just wanted to say this video is not meant to be an all-in-one shot, some type of comprehensive investigation into the disappearance of Noah Davis. I'm trying to specifically address a lot of theories that are being kicked around by critics of Noah's brother, Joshua Wright, uh, and his information that he's released in several different public areas. My ultimate goal here is to try to help move the focus back to Noah and hopefully inspire all these parties to take more constructive steps towards their individual investigations and maybe put this feud to the side. Um, and I know it's a lot to ask. I don't know how successful I'm gonna be, but uh, that is the intent of doing this video and asking these questions. And I wanna thank Joshua Wright for allowing to come on the show. And I was very upfront with him uh, about, you know, I, I want to have you on, but we might be asking some tough questions and he was willing to do that. So here he is, Joshua Wright. Hey, Joshua. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for the time. And um, I just wanted to be clear, you know that I've been working with several critics of yours. I've been looking into all their information, trying to find the points that really touch the case, because a lot of the stuff that they criticize you for, I don't really see how it's related to the disappearance. Uh, they're cataloging basically every discrepancy that you have ever said publicly, they're bouncing it against, you know, he said this over here, he said that over there. If it's related to Noah's disappearance, sure, I want to talk about that. But there's a lot of cases where it isn't. So I'm trying to drill down to some of the, what I consider the more important aspects here. Uh, now you remember when we met at CrimeCon, I did tell you, uh, I did ask you specifically if you'd be willing to answer any question and you're, you're good with that, right? Uh, yes, I'm very good with that. Um, I've never been someone against answering questions. Uh, we didn't even talk up until just now, you know, yeah. I, I no prep time. I'm wearing a yeah. sweaty shirt and I work, I've been working in the room all day. I'm not even. I have no setup here. I'm ready to go, though, in it's, regards to that. It's a really good point that you've made, um, and I did that on purpose. Oh, Danielle, I got that. I've seen that coming. I can tell. You guys have both been very professional with uh, getting it going. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we're trying to really do kind of a point counterpoint thing. I've talked about it on the previous video I released, so I won't go through all of it again. But you can see uh, Josh is being very clear that he understands that that's what we're trying to do here. So I got I an email. Uh, earlier today, and it kind of sums up some of what I think is part of the problem with, uh, in particular, the feud. So let me read a little piece of this to you. Uh, I'm going to keep this person anonymous, but I want to believe Josh had nothing to do with Noah's disappearance, but he makes it hard to do. The lies, why twist every single thing? I mean, things that don't even matter. Like in the Vanish podcast, he goes into great detail over him getting custody of his daughter the same day Noah was released. Having wow. to turn, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance. Uh, having to turn the car around and go pick him up when, in fact, he'd gained custody of his daughter the year before, and Noah's godmother, godmother actually picked him up from jail. Who cares who picked him up from jail? And that's the person's quote around all this. But it does highlight part of the problem here. Um, first of all, do you want to address that about the custody? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, that's probably uh, one of the only times that I noticed because I went back that they're right. Yeah, that was uh, that was something I did in error. Actually, I probably picked Noah up a total of what probably almost every release. I had the only vehicle in our house. Gotcha. And so it was a very common thing, and yeah, I just had a mix of the days. Is all it was. But you know, I never just like today. I don't have uh, anything prepared beforehand other than this. Yeah. Right. Right. Which is how many days I've been, you know, on on this. He's been missing that long, so yeah, it's all I prepared. So you're willing to say they are absolutely correct about that? Your your brain just no, didn't work I'm right. No, I'm saying that I'm correct about it, and I made a mistake. They yeah. say that that's a lie. That a lie 
by definition means I intended to deceive. Yes. I made an error. Right. I apologize. I'm not perfect. I'm in the middle of all kinds of crazy things, yeah. including the little bit of distance between the custody and that. That was still a big deal to me at that moment. It's still a big deal every day. I have her still. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. man, I'm not an android. I'm not a robot. I'm not perfect. Yep. There you go. Absolutely. Um, before I, I all of this. I that way, though. I do. I will say that. But it definitely wasn't my uh, intention. Yeah. Now, before all of this stuff, had you ever heard in your life that you were a storyteller? Have you been known to kind of color your stories a little bit to make them a little sweeter? No. No? I'm just You've telling you. Never I'm heard like that before? Said. Nope. Okay. Uh, I tell, I've been told that I tell good stories. I, I'm, I have no fear of public speaking and stuff like that, but I just prefer to, almost like a DJ does, like control, keep the keep everybody around me, especially the ones that matter, uplifted. Yeah. Even at my own expense, I'm that person. So and when I have to be serious, I don't like repeating myself, I will say. And so like, if I've went into something once already, I don't mind saying, I, I've already said that, but I'll tell you, you know, it's not something I enjoy doing because we... I don't know. I would prefer to just be lighthearted and, uh, yeah. you know, move on. I get that sense from you. I mean, even in terms of the way that you've been kind of participating in this feud, which I'm going to be very clear to you. I, th I think there's things you've done that are absolutely participating in the feud. You know, I've, I've watched well, your videos. Care. I got attacked. I don't care. I, I, yeah. I was in the middle of doing what I'm doing. People, you know, say I killed my mom or little Michael at Boylan uh, Lake, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I go through enough. I don't care. I didn't, I don't yeah. address them personally. Yeah. I don't deal with them on any other level other than parody. I don't know. I have to do something for therapy. But I do, I, I do recognize that. And you just called it out. You use parody. You, you are in some ways, you have a comedic mindset. I know this, I'm the same type of person. And sometimes when I'm retelling stories from the past, my wife will catch me and she'll be like, why, why does this story get better every time you tell it? <laughs> you know, Why does that one fact where it used to be five is now 10 and next time you tell it, it's gonna be 15? Well, at least it's not calling you out on repeating the story. I'm just that they, maybe they said listen to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I like that. Thank you. No, Thank you and, and honestly, on top of that, we have, uh, you know, some people do naturally have better memories than others. Uh, sometimes people have their memories impaired, especially by trauma or psychological events, uh, all kinds of stuff. So what's your assessment of your own memory? Has it been a problem in your life before? No, no. Um, I just had like a thing where, with my social, um, you know, life and uh, personal life and uh, parental life and all that. I just stick to honesty. I, I never intend to, <clears throat> like, I bring the truth up in my answers, replies, even when being lighthearted or whatever. But um, I can't remember the quote word for word. Please don't attack that. But it's, yeah. it's you don't ever have to worry about having a good memory. You're just always telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing I think it's uh, my version of a Mark Twain quote. I don't know where that <laughs> came from. But yeah, you don't have to worry about it. I've been truthful, truthful intentions. I'm here in good faith. Uh, there's no one, even anybody that has absolute hatred for me, which is crazy. I hate nobody. Yeah. Um, who could not understand why the guy with suspended licenses wants to look for his brother or stuff like that? I don't, <laughs> I don't have any idea how anybody can be like, sit down. Your license is suspended. Don't. Right. right. <laughs> I, I, I want to find my brother. I'm going to find my brother. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's not that hard to understand for, for me. Either. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I do know that there's a, you know, majority will notice that type of stuff. Yeah. So thank you. Um, how many siblings does Noah have? Um, growing up, it was me, Chase. Mm -hmm. And um, he's one year beneath me, Chase is. And we had Noah. I think there was a seven year difference between 1990. Okay. Yeah. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Uh, seven or eight years. Okay. Uh, Noah was the baby. Now, there is another aspect to his family, but I know it's debated. There's been information no, not, I've seen. No, not, there's no debate. There's just pop up claims i guess you would say i don't know how to say i don't debate back i can't i can't speak names i can't say any of that stuff it's not i, I grew up with that child i grew up with him in my lab i grew up with his dad yeah around you know it's not really much of a debate it sounds like somebody's knocking on the door with a pizza 
Right. I don't know. I didn't order a pizza. Who ordered a pizza? Yeah. Um, that's really, that's it. That's, that's, that's me. Like, huh? Oh, they're saying, boy, okay. What can you do? Well, I know we've got, we've got a birth certificate that shows one man's name and it's not the person that they're saying it is. I have seen communication that they've told me is from Noah to this other guy where he is referring to him as dad and saying that it feels weird for him to say that. He he definitely wanted, uh, I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah. He, He wanted to, you know, make contact. That way, yeah. yeah. I've never objected to that. My 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 father has a, a similar situation like that with his father's. Uh, it's just it's not unheard of, but it is what it is. Yeah. It, their marriage did not even work, but right now he is going to be with me in a couple of days doing something about no. He's still here. He's still active. He still cares. He's disabled, but he's ready to go. So. Nice. You know, I have a, I have a, nothing but respect for that. And Noah has all, you know, Noah cared a lot about him. So, yeah. And he I'm was going to help Noah, to right? He was going to help Noah with the, um, with the money that it would cost for him to go to the rehab. I, that, that was out of my, um, really that whole Carter's Hope thing. Although today I noticed on some of this board here, some of the Carter's Hope applications, Apparently he had applied there before in 2010 and I had given him the application because I, you can like pre-fill it out or something like that. It lacked his signature. Yeah. But point being, I think he'd been trying to go for quite a while. So I don't really know, honestly. Yeah. And he seemed that he, I, I heard a recording of him actually speaking about it. Like Carter's hope was really something that he wanted very badly because he was looking to make a change in his life. He was tired of the cycle of being kind of in and out of prison and he needed help to do that. And from what I understand, this man was nice enough to try to help him with that. So yeah, that that phone call that was from Google Voice. Yeah, and when I found that, and I still find from I know there's a couple more good ones on there somewhere. That's from when people called into my telephone number that I've had for this whole time. And um, <coughs> pardon me, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, that call meant a lot to me because. Of exactly what you heard, it caused me um, doubly to have a moment of clarity. I heard the conversation. I was sitting on the couch when I passed the phone over to my mom. Um, that was the moment I'm listening and I'm hearing, you know, mostly her side, but I can hear my brother. And listening to it later after the fact, post uh, missing and everything, and um, he never knew anything any different, and he could not, and he never was able to go out of the environment that he did get stuck in by mistakes. Right. And he was enabled a long time ago and was disabled because of that. Yeah. In a sense, like people show up, we don't live there anymore ourselves, show up there to this day, knocking on the door. Hey, is no here? Not a joke. They do. Yeah. And it never stopped. And that's all it took, especially if he was single and it was a female. Who knows? Something, right. anything right there, right in his face. It's a really hard thing because addictions like that do typically come with a social aspect, a group of people, and then you start caring about the people, but the addiction is your connection to them. So yeah, I understand. I understand it's really hard to get out of. And he was- Oh man, that hurts me bad because I wish I was in a better scenario or situation and I was always think mom's health looked like it was getting better. Right. You know, and that's why I was like, man, she was out in the GBI's parking lot the day before and the sun was out and it was hot. So, you know, and she was just all dressed up, ready to go and looked so protective and everything else. And she got out and went in there for hours. I was like, yeah. Mom, you know, mom's looking good. She'd been that way consistently for quite a while. Um, I was, you know, me and Kaylee had begun plans even at that point to, you know, do our move out. And, um, yeah, we needed and wanted and we're hopefully going to get, it wouldn't have been hard to talk him into it, him to come with us because I don't have another person around at our house. I need a babysitter and stuff like that. Right. And they love each other and 100% knew that he would be, you know, ready to go coming with us and all that. And yeah, I wish that I could have gotten him. He never had his own phone number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. It really hurts my feelings to hear that because he never knew anything any different. Yeah. And that's yeah. the sad 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 stuff and I, I it just wasn't him it was so much potential and he just glued you know of potential yeah so funny so ready um above par in most areas in life you know and i hate that for him i really do and um you know we are all now what i can see is his legacy 
Yeah. You know, we're going to wrap things up and we're going to fix anything that needs fixing and put a ribbon on it. Right. Right. Um, now, some of the critics have mentioned that they've spoken to people that say that your relationship with Noah was quite a bit tougher than you've been portraying it, particularly on the Vanished podcast. Um, now, you guys were brothers. You grew up as brothers. I imagine you had fights. You had disagreements. Uh, how many brothers that we got out here in America? <laughs> no, not really. Nothing ever violent. You know? yeah, yeah, we were, we were brothers. I mean, good grief, on money. Um, I was more of a um, I see the last from. Uh, I can't remember when they got divorced. I don't know. I was also someone that he looked up to. Right. And there's a video we're jumping off a bridge. He's uh he's got I think a, a girl in a red dress with him, and he's just flipping off a bridge. Yeah, and he says he says a curse when I said, "Watch your mouth." I was that way with him. Hmm. I was that guy. If he done something, I was. It wasn't beneath me to go, dude. Come here. What's going on? You know, even my messages to him where I'm looking for him. You're not in trouble, dude. Just come back and bring my stuff back. You know, right? Uh, dude, you know, maybe others said, "What are you doing?" You know, like, brothers, brothers, brothers. Yeah, it's kind of like wow. It, it sounds like a bunch of sisters or something that would bash something like that. Because brothers, if you have a brother, what? I mean, yeah, of course we got each other. Another, yeah, time to time, but barely did. I don't even remember. I can't think of one single time other than like a calm down, don't talk back to mom or something like that. Right. You know, I really can't think of one. Okay. We never got a fist fight or anything ever. Yeah. If I did, I would say so because I don't care what anybody actually genuinely thinks. The truth is what the truth is, and, and there's been nothing done wrong. It's not even up for debate. Yeah. Any questions about it? There's really not. I mean, we've established everything that needs to be established, and almost said what you would think. Should all you know? I should have already said it all already at this point, and I'm going back, and I'll keep being here until we find him. But but I'm you're sure not you're not the type of guy to back away from a fist fight, is my impression, at least from what I heard in the Vanish podcast. <clears throat> Actually, I'm, I'm the nicest person. I, uh, I'm a bouncer still. You know, touch, don't touch me. I'll tell you anything you need to hear. I apologize about that. If there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know. I have no ego involved. Yeah, ever. Um, I've always successfully defended myself but i don't like going there i've saved more lives than i've hurt people yeah okay. i really have i do know how to gain control of situations and that's what I, even in a fight i gain control i don't win yeah well and you've worked also as a corrections offer, officer previously as well right yeah i'm proud of that too. i'm very yeah. good i'm very very good at it. nationwide special operations response team is what taught me about brotherhood really about how to stick by one another and not let people break the line. Yeah. 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 And, and I know I some, wonder. some critics seem to misidentify your statements around that thinking that you're trying to say that you were formerly a police officer, but corrections officers wear shields. Mm -hmm. I imagine I there's, there's certified in the state of Georgia. When I, after I left course civic, the private uh, industry who hired me at 18, which I don't even agree with that. Yeah. Um, I, I was there for almost, uh, you know, I went there in 2003 when I transitioned over to the state of Georgia, it was because I actually made a decision for the first time in my life. I was like, I don't agree with the business profit off these people. I was like, I don't want to put my career here. I'd rather, I was already feeling pretty good at what I did at that point. So I said, I can just go to the home state and see what I can do here. Yeah. Yeah. And they do post certify you there. I was a post certified officer. Mm. I just didn't have a patrol car. You know, that's how that works. Okay. So let's get to talking about Noah a little bit. Uh, when did he disappear? What's going on with this date? When when did Noah actually disappear, in in your estimation? Same date, it looks like. It looks like. Yeah. July 28th? Yeah, it's pretty locked up. But I mean, there's okay. nothing past that ever. Yeah. Now, um, a discrepancy keeps coming up, and that's the date that you actually filed the missing person report. I think Danielle did a really good job. Nailed yeah, she looking into that. Uh, and she definitely noted that we know on August 7th, you definitely got the stolen truck report. And part of that report was you were expecting them to find Noah with your truck. Absolutely, I was. I had no, I had no forethought about this being something to give me a headache tomorrow. I thought right. this was going to be, uh, he'll be home tonight saying he knew I was getting out or, you know, huh. huh. But you had no. heard from Uncle Rick that he at least was missing for a matter of days, right? Uh, your mom hasn't seen him was more of a healthy uh, message came out. Gotcha. Uh, we don't know where he's at because they, they normally wouldn't know where he was at. And like I said, he did not have a phone. 
Right. Uh, so um, Noah is a lot like me. I'm not a uh, on a CB radio with my cell phone. Just don't call me all the time. Right. You know, and um, so I'm not gonna be like, all right, I'm 30 seconds away. I'm about to be there. I'm about to pull in. Like, I'd rather just pull in or something like that. Yeah. You know, so uh, Noah was a lot like me in the sense where he didn't like talking on the phone in regards to where am I at, when I will be there. He was not like that. He did not report to probation officers at home. Right. You know, so he's not that way. So did you not file the report until the following week, which is what the paperwork looks to be in terms of the official missing persons report? Is that possible? No, um, what I did is exactly what I said. I, I'm not trying to sound funny there. I, I wish I could pull up the day. That, I mean, she nailed it. That's exactly what I did. That day I asked for so In order to file for the uh, stolen truck, I had to list the driver. Right. That's, right. that's how that went. And so I listed the driver, and um, mom comes up and tells him, like, we don't know where he's at. He has not been home. You know, it kind of starts in that. Oh, okay, okay, let me see what I can look at here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that was Officer. I'm getting old, but our old man has been a long time. Yeah. Officer Fry, I believe. Okay, and this is all off my memory here. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, by the way. I know you're uh, no truth in front of you. Me, I got a sponge and a phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I don't mind being corrected or noticed or whatever. Yeah. Steered back. Um, I believe it was Officer Fry there that day. I also believe it was Ranky. I remember standing on the front of the porch of the house, and I remember watching him go and sit in the car with his little rain cap covering his hat. And he sat in there for about 30 minutes. They made the bolo, be on the lookout. You know, he came back up. He let me know that they'd found it already. And he's crazy. He got a phone call. There's the phone call. You got that recording there because I recorded it. Right. Why did I do that? I always try to do that. Mm -hmm. Look, it's relevant now. Yeah. And if I didn't have these things, by the way, these recordings, what would we have? Even more of my, I wonder if that was what really happened. Right, right. That's why I had it. But it was never for public distribution. It was more for, okay, I don't like my integrity question. If this is a court of law, I say, do you believe I really didn't say that? I can show you differently. But I don't like constantly, you know, I, hearsay, hearsay. Yeah. What are we got to do about it? Argue. Yeah. I don't like that. So I've, I've always done uh, personal journals of anything I'm looking into because even how I explain being serious and not liking to repeat myself. Right. I will do it right the first time. Yeah. And it's, nothing more is better for any investigation than being able to look at your notes and see what you did before you speak from your mouth. Because people like to look at it like a, I can't remember the name of the movie, but they said there's a, um, a couple things you can't take back on this job, bullets from your gun and words from your mouth. Mm. Yeah. And um, there, yep. that's a pretty good way of putting it. I would never want to have people pick me apart like they do now. If this had never went out in any media, you know, like, uh, golly, it's gotten so much attention around the world but none at home. Right. This would have just stayed at home, Tennessee Valley area. Yeah. Oh, no. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Every, so who's no, who's the no last prayer. person who's Go the ahead. last person that saw him, Josh? That's a great question. I would have to I'm gonna think. <clears throat> um it's I don't know. I don't know. That that answer off the top of my head, I don't know. Okay. He's seen a couple people that day, according to his messages. But whom have I talked to in person that said they, you know, um my uncle Rick is the only one I can go to myself and go, hey, man, what was he wearing today? Because I've been trying to figure that out a lot, and especially recently. Right. This week even, I've had some, uh, I don't know, a few inquiries. And then a uh, question pop up myself. Even yeah. mediums. Three mediums contacted me yesterday wanting to know what kind of shoes he had on. I don't understand how these people got my number, but whatever. Okay. That was a great question. I was like, I don't know. Yeah. So and the day the, the day you're talking about is July 28th. But that's that's the last day where yeah, he's talking right. to several people. Um, mm -hmm. So, Uncle Rick, did he give you a, a last time that he had seen Noah? Yeah, Rick's um, Rick's a soundbite communicator. But yeah, uh, I don't know where he's at, man. He'd rather just say like that. Where's Noah? I don't know where he's at. 
he doesn't follow to set it up with the information. You know, he's got he's no he's all meat and no potatoes or just potatoes and no meat sometimes. I love him to death, <laughs> that's all. So did he give you a date that, that he last No, because he doesn't talk about that. Honestly, yeah. no, he didn't. He probably said Saturday or something uh, like that. Gotcha. Whatever it was. Uh oh. I just said a weekday. You know, he probably said something like that. Like it was just whatever the weekday was in that year. I don't know. There's something like that. He's very country. He's very down home country in his uh, his uh, communication. Gotcha. gotcha. Over like that, stuff like that. He's, he's one of them. He's a you know, Athens, Tennessee man. That's where we're from. There, there's been some talk about um, on August seventh that you might have made some statement about seeing Noah within the past ten minutes before he took your truck. Do you know uh, where that's coming from or what that's about? I don't know. I think that was me getting a little. Uh, I don't remember what audio that came from. It sounded like it had a little bit of merit to it, but you know, I think it was one of the moments where I was just in an argument, and I did. I think maybe miss. It's like fighting with a girlfriend. It seemed like, like oh man, I just I don't remember. I think I quickly corrected that. Statement. Okay, gotcha. So you did not see him on obviously on August seventh. No, no. Okay. No, no. And then it you know put that out for me to share in the world and all that. No, oh no, what I just lied and put it all out there. I've seen him say, oh man, it just would be. Too. It was a mistake again. I make them. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Gotcha. Um, so we have a, a Facebook private message between Uncle Rick and Noah on July 28th at around 917. And is that the last communication that, that we have that we know is actually Noah? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the one that's kind of always, always kicked around as the official. Um, do we know where he was when he sent that? No, no, not not exactly. There's pinging cell phone locations in the uh, dated version of Google location uh, location history at that time, which was not as accurate like it is currently, which it's very accurate now. Right there, it's spotty. It's like cell phone tower says he's here, and, and until he switched cell phone, it's kind of like that there. Okay, but there were um, pinging locations, IP addresses from both his. And again, he, he um, communicated more with Facebook Messenger than he did SMS. Right. But both uh, have logged in IP addresses and uh, and whatnot. And the downloaded Facebook account and its security file says uh, the logins and logouts and what model. And right. Uh, they say you know a, a general location with their IP address. Sometimes, other than that, um, I don't know. So you never checked that specific time frame in the location <laughs> history to try to see where he was. Um, it, it looked like that. I, I mean, I seen him at the hotel very good and thoroughly. I think a day or so before then, that day I see activity looking like it's downtown during uh, water treatment facility with that. What I, again? I'm answering off the top of my head. Here. Yeah, yeah. Quite yeah. sure that. Oh, yeah. That keep that in mind too. I may be off here, but uh -huh. I, I bet you I'm not off by much. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got my laptop here. Actually, myself too. I will pull up if I have to. Yeah, no, no, I got you. Know, you. I actually, I'm trying to keep up with my live uh, replies here on some things. But um, uh, near the, the water treatment facility downtown Chattanooga, I did see some activity, yeah. Okay. I gave all that information to um, Alan Miles, and um, it was, yeah, he has it. Okay, Detective Alan Miles. He didn't seem that interested in it, but they, yeah. no, no one thought it was the, you know, Google location history and stuff is quite new. Yeah. Uh, Detective Miles is still on the case, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we know how long Noah was hanging out at that America's Best Inn from the location history? Sounds like a day or so, a two-day, probably maximum. Mom. Okay. He was kind of centering his um, whatever this was he had going on there, not our house. Because okay. our house would have... My, most definitely canceled that and you know ruined that for him very quickly. His little fundraising and networking and none of that would have worked. Okay. No one stayed at our house. They would come by visit, come by get, come by drop off. Nobody stayed there. Right. Ever. Right. Um, is there any reason why no one else actually wound up filing the missing persons report? I mean, we've got your your mother, we've got the uncle, we've got uh, Noah's godmother that obviously picked her up at one point from the jail, but uh, why does it ultimately fall down to you on August 7th or 15th, if even if you debate that, but why does it happen at that point instead of before, if you know we know that he's missing for a, a bit of a prolonged period of time, at least a week, right? 
Oh, that, that part, the, at least it's a weak part. I don't know. Remember, the, I'm getting out of jail. I don't know he's missing, really. I just think he's out partying or with a chick, probably, as far as being Noah. Anyhow, when I'm getting out, my mindset was headache, headache. What? Where's my truck? Why is my truck not picking me up? Yeah, you know, but I still see resolution coming quick in the, in the short term. I see unnecessary things having to happen when duty's not home in my truck, uh, eye rolling happening. And so we call the police to make them go. They bring the truck back and you know the whole that's all we were looking at looking at or whatever yeah there but um <clears throat> what, what was the question i'm sorry why am i usually the one that steps into that position yeah why did it come down to you to do that when there's there's other people that should have noticed while you were still in jail that he hasn't been around for a prolonged period of time i understand that he doesn't necessarily live at home i understand he likes to crash on oh, he, lived, he lived there he lived there well, he I know he lives there. Huh? I know he lives there, but when he's particularly if he's out partying or something like that, he's staying with other people. How long yeah, do those don't party at that house? Yeah. Right. So how long does that usually go on? Is he gone for a week, two weeks at a time? It and wasn't usual for him to do that. He would uh, he would do it like a daily whatever. Like uh, he would probably do something with a friend for about two to three hours. Okay. But he came back home because we really did keep an eye on mom. Now, did he spend the night somewhere every now and again? Yeah, he did. Yeah. But no, it was, he would come home. He so essentially. Home. He definitely didn't have us. No, he was never like a mom did not know where he was for whatever amount of day. No, never. They always talked, by the way, even on his longest stint. And I, it, it, would, it used to even shock me how close they were able to remain knowing the pain that she was going through, you know, and yeah. that was her baby boy. You know, like I, when he was, um, I don't know if you see the picture, uh-huh. the picture behind me right here. He, we called him bubbles, man. Cause he would just, just sit there and smile and giggle and spit bubbles all the time. And then <laughs> mom took him to um, a photography studio and he's sitting in a tin bathtub. He's like, yeah. just being silly man and he's always been like that like his smile now if you see him you'll see a smile in those pictures and you'll yeah i see it you know i'm like it's, it's, it's my brother i miss it i miss that i hear his laughter all the time yeah you know uh, it, it, it lighting the room up like i like to do but he don't even have to talk and i do that too much right right uh so josh you actually raised a bit of a point that supports the question I was trying to ask though, if it was normal for him to only go out and party for these little finite windows. And by the time you get out of jail, we're looking at 10 days that he's been missing. How come no one else filed that report? Why did it come to you? That answers your last question for you. Um, I get out, I'm like, what? (laughs) You know, yeah, it's like, it's like coming home and the house has been broken into and, uh, your friend that lives there with you is just sitting on the couch watching TV. I'm like, where's the rest of the stuff? Right. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of it. I got it. Thank you. And I do it. That's what it was. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Not that I looked at my family like that, but it's kind of like I clearly have came home now, and I clearly noticed major things. I said, um, anybody know anything now? What were you doing about it? I don't know. Wait until you got out. Right. That was also the reply back to my mom. I didn't want to do anything drastic because it wasn't my property or place to do. You know, mom did recognize that it was my truck and, da, 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 and I might actually have gotten out. It's possible if I would have gotten out, you know, and um, mom would have sent that out because I gave him permission. I signed it over. And so, like, you know, uh, that I may have been upset if mom would have done that without my say in the matter because, um, no, I don't. I didn't want them seizing my vehicle. I've never... Gotcha. I'm, I'm all about living away from, uh, you know, municipalities and police departments and just being our uh, our own independent selves. Yeah. I would much rather not go in tow yards and get my vehicle. Oh, man, it would be nice. It would just be nice. Gotcha. I hear you. Uh, in one police statement, it clearly states that when they spoke to you, that you had said the last time you saw Noah was June 20th. And we know that this is a date that got copied to the NamUs record, has been on posters, even T-shirts that you've printed have showed this because you use the NamUs poster. I used to. Yeah. Did I use June? Uh, it was it was on that, the NamUs poster. So when you use the NamUs poster, uh, you were the actually NamUs poster was based off the uh, the police right um, case file, but not not anything I did. I never had any say so on any of NamUs other than 
eye patch to fit. I don't know if it still says it, but it said he had two different color eyes for the longest. Yes. Like, what? It they fixed it. That? No, they fixed it. They fixed it. Okay. Yeah. It was like that. I, mean, I was like, people are looking for guys got like multicolored eyes right now, man. Good job on getting that started. I appreciate it. Right, know? right. Not that I was in the smart aleck tone because people assume I have that. Yeah. I'm in the sense where like this person, you know, he's a human being regardless of his age right now. Like yeah. he is still not located. And like two years, mom, I feel like almost is just as delicate as the baby sometimes because she's so broken hearted. Josh, why won't they call me? Josh, why won't they do that? I'll get them to call you, mom. Oh, that's no worries. I'm sure everything, I'm talking about the police to my mom. Like everything's perfect all the time. Right. Everything's perfect. All, and this is true. This is very seriously true. Mom, I'm not, there's nothing to be worried about. They'll be down here. They'll call you back. They must not have, uh, May have sent the wrong email address. Maybe they sent it to me or something. Maybe they called me instead of you back. I don't know. Let me get a hold of it and I'll find out. I was all the time to her um, justifying their not corresponding. And I was. I really was. And this me bringing this up is not me doing a, n- a nudge at them. You know what? I don't even care how this it received. I was trying to take my mom out of the pain all the time. All the time. All yeah. the time. Her little baby boy's going, nobody knows. Nobody knows. You were a... Fully capable parent. If my daughter would listen right now, I would not go to sleep. Yeah. You know, like I would not be able to do it. And mom in her state needed to sleep. Yeah. No, I get you. I hear you. Um, so do we know where that June 20th thing even started from? Is it possible that you said July 20th and they got the month I wrong? I said July 20th. I think I have to do Well, I mean, because if you look at the time frame... Did I say that? I don't know. I, I know it started at a certain date, I think, and then it moved up. Like, you know, like it was me figuring out, Yeah. you know, uh, uh, information. Because I don't think anybody gets a full case file download, uh, and then they read it, and then they come up with their answer, and it's their final answer when they're looking into stuff. Yeah. I'm finding out as I go because I'm doing it on the fly, you know, and I also am not a detective. I think I'm getting pretty close now to getting a you know, uh, you know a good experience and thorough one on this one. But yeah, I do have some training and investigative background and everything. But I am not them, and I very much need my detectives. Yeah, honestly. And- and honestly, the, the issues that you've had with the detectives here for missing person cases is common. It's very, very common. Not enough communication, you being concerned that they're not working hard enough, uh, leads that you send in that you get no reply on. Uh, all that stuff is fairly common for missing persons cases. They don't have the best touch with communication all the time, particularly well, with the Are we family. talking about... Uh, just nationwide or something with yes. that. Yes, we are coming. Uh, and honestly, worldwide, I, I look into cases all over. I the was place. just asking. I thought it sounded like you were saying for Catoosa County or the. No, the no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I mean, it is a worldwide thing. There's a certain amount of time where they're really hot on the case, usually for about the first thirty days or so, and then it starts hitting the kind of back burner because their caseload is constantly coming in and they're constantly refocusing and. Uh, it is a common thing. So know that the, the tough spots you're hitting with Detective Miles. It makes it makes sense. Uh, some people might question I, I, you. All I've ever expected, I think there's something in Georgia law that says while the case is not cold, it stays active. That they report back to the reporting party, the family or the wife, the whomever it might be, at least within once every ninety days or something like that. It's, it's something like that. Maybe yeah. I'll look it up while we're talking. Point is, though, I never even expected that. But if I say, "Hey, take a fount this here. This is you know, you need to see this or whatever. Come get it, please. If you don't mind, or what do you want to do? You can drop it off and then." Two months later, I don't get. I, I didn't get no email. Right, right. I'm like, okay, man. I'll see what I can do about sending you know road flares off or something to get your attention or something, or I'll send you a USB drive to a PO box or something. Right. I even did that one time. I really did. I filled it up, thirty two gigabytes. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted a relay. I'm a relay right now. Yes, people are going to send me things they don't want to send the police right now, and just you know. I listen, I read it, absolutely I do. But guess yeah. who gets it uh, almost 100% of the time? Guess who's going to get it, guys? I'm not the police. Right. But the police have to fix it. They're going to fix it, too. Now, they're going to be the upfront. Uh, I hope I'm there, but I don't want to be there for that Scooby-Doo moment. I don't want to be there for that. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, was there any particular I reason? I, I know how good you are in terms of learning new stuff and getting stuff done yourself. Was there any reason why you didn't enter him into NamUs, why you waited two years? I don't even know what NamUs was. I still don't get it. Okay. Yeah, and that's. I mean, that's honestly, a I'm just, that's the honest answer. I, I think I like uh, I've looked into and uh, studied their uh, unidentified remains 
Yes. Uh, site, and I like that. And I found some locally that one time I remember this one, and they had the artist renderings. The one looked just like Noah. And it was in between here and Atlanta. I was like, whoa, okay, yeah. this is a pretty important site. I reached out. Um, I'll just keep this person's name out of this, but he's a detective down there. And I'm like, um, hey, how do you know if we've checked to see if this is Noah or not or whatever? How does that go? Uh, yeah. He goes, uh, no, it's just an automated uh, setup, a process that if it is Noah, they'll already know, uh, like automatically. And mm-hmm. I don't get that kind of how that might be the thing, but. Yeah, no, you're right. I know there's not one national database. There's not the one database. Right. If I'm remembering correctly, NamUs wants to be. Yes, yes. And they're even That's putting laws into place in certain states where they're making it legally that the reporting departments have to enter it into NamUs because of what yeah. you're talking about. Because they capture the DNA profile, and then if there is a unidentified body and it has the matching DNA – Boom, case solved. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly it. made a lot of sense to me. And then, then it also made me want to con- like, oh, man, look at all these other things on here I need to look at or whatever. Wow. Yeah. What are these good? Next thing you know, you're like uh, absorbing everybody in the whole state's pain and case. Reading, looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it. It's well, so I do hard. it. I do it on a weekly basis, and yeah, uh, you, you know, Danielle you does it a lot Danielle too. Danielle does it. Oh man, I've yeah. seen you guys do it, and I think individually, I've warned all three of you. I yeah. if I have, you don't kind of want to mention that. I've got public servant in me, and I'm big on it. I want to help. I do help. I save lives, and I have. Yeah. And I really have, and it feels good, and it's really what I like to do, and I'll always be doing it. Yeah. But you can't not. Uh, you got to remember, you're not going to stop. I can mm. see your drive. You're just going to constantly absorb all this, and this is the worst parts of the world all the time. Yeah. But it's because of your heart that you're wanting and you're reaching out, and your arms are going to extend around the world. Just don't forget to squeeze that water out every now and then. Yeah. Oh, boy. You've got no. to. You know what I mean? I just yeah. worry, I guess. That's how Danielle and I met. We're kind of each other's support system when it comes to yeah. the pressure getting Venting on too is much. important. So, yeah. Venting is important. Keeping your yeah. sense of humor is important. I've seen things in the prison system that would blow people's minds. Yeah. Like, it really would. Uh, we'd always stop at the gas station and have a fountain coke and make jokes before we went home because you, had, you couldn't go home as Officer Wright. Officer Wright did not go home. Right, right. That's why, that, you know, that, those things need to stop and get out properly. You know, and, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just just throwing it out there, but keep doing what you're doing. I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah, I I, I can't even imagine being in your position, but you guys are very good at what you do. Yeah, I really appreciate that, Josh. Thank you. When was the last time you saw Noah? (sighs) Swimming. Swimming that day with my daughter and him. At my my friend Zane's house, there's a brief video of him doing that belly flop. Yeah. That's the first thing that pops up in my mind. I think it was the 14th of <clears throat> July. We separated that night. He went to a friend's house. Uh, my daughter had a rare visit with her mother, and it wasn't too much longer. Yeah, we hadn't crossed paths again visually that I'm aware of now. I really don't know of it. Yeah. I know we talk on the phone. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. From what I can remember off the top of my head now, four years ago. Right. That was it. It seems to work in the time frame. I mean, you know, he had just gotten out of prison recently. They're lining up him going into the rehab. And yeah, 14th of July yeah. would certainly fit in there. Okay. I, I will say like the what sticks out the most that means a lot to me now with our last uh, encounter is that phone call where I'm in that holding cell, you know, and how he talked to me for the first time ever. It was insanely like it was. I actually um, have put in the request and they're very good at pulling recorded calls down there. Yeah, and in the in the holding cell that I was in, I'm in there with way too many people, and every one of these calls are free. You're not entering in your code, so six hundred thousand. Who knows how many unidentified, and not labeled uh, phone calls are calling out? Right, but they're able to find them. They found one that I made to a bondsman while in this thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, if we could find that one call, uh, I don't not for you know showing off to everyone else. It just meant so much to me. I remember he was trying to. Tell me that he was going to take care of it. Wow. I got, like, I got you, Josh. I was like, hey, Josh, make sure you stay calm. I love you. I'll make sure I'll get that truck home. I was worried about that because it's the only vehicle with that entire property, the whole house. Nobody right. had a car with us. That was how we got around, got groceries, everything. Mom's a doctor. Very important. Kaylee had to eat that and stuff, you know. 
that was the other thing. I needed Kelly to get home. She was at a location that wasn't her home. And right. he said, Josh, I will take care of it. I will take care of it. Don't worry about nothing, Josh. However long you're in there, don't worry about nothing. I will take care of it. I love you. Everything's going to be fine. Do your time and don't let it. You know, he was giving me advice. And that was the first time ever. And he just said, and I remember how it ended. He was just like, Josh, Josh, Josh. And I was upset. I was like, man, it's not like, you know, I'm trying to justify and I sound like oh, I'll quit. Quit, you know, I'm big brother too still. Stop me. It's not that big. Yeah, Josh, Josh, Josh. I love you, brother. Yeah. I love you. I'll take care of you. I promise this. I don't know. I want to get that call. I really do. And yeah. uh, that's our last time we ever talked right there. I remember that call. Yeah. It was the first time he'd ever talked to me like that. But the first time I've ever heard him talk like that ever. I've never seen him do anything like that where I'll go take care of it. And he, I've never seen him step up like that ever. Wow. I yeah. hope you get that recording. I think that that'd yeah. be really nice to have. I even went, I told him I'd volunteer my own time to go do the, you know, but not this repetitive, I'm sure boring activity of, oh man, look how many files are in this folder searching for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. No um, so the missing person report, another thing that the critics talk about on this is that the missing person report is filed in Catoosa. Uh, but not in Tennessee, where supposedly he was last seen, and that's where your truck was found. Uh, did you try to file one in Tennessee? Um, how did we find my truck? You know, how did we find it? We filed the report, right? Yeah. So you were uh, assuming that the report... The kind of thing there, but yeah. um, from everything I know, and I don't know much, I don't know anything. How's that, guys? Um, jurisdiction, home and venue... Uh, counting of your residence or where it happens or whatever type of thing. And it's normally kind of, that's a good way of guessing that it'll probably be wherever state you are in. Yeah. Like right now, if I, if I, if I go, boo, I don't like you, John, we'll go by your house, wherever you live at in whatever state. I don't have a clue. Right now. Mm -hmm. I throw an egg at your house or whatever. Uh, you could file that charge on me at your sheriff's department. Right. Or you could do it staying at home and, you know, electronically in uh, Walker County where I live at here. Yeah. You know, that's how you do it. They can't say, oh, we ain't got nothing to do with that. He don't live around here. I'm like, uh, I live here. That's why, my, you know, it's kind of like one of those things. There's usually two places you can do any kind of thing, uh, something like that. That's how jurisdiction and venue works. Mm -hmm. I don't like ever, if I can help it, say things when I know things like this. But I've even had uh, officials explain to me that that's not the case or we can't do this and that. that. Yeah. Okay, sir. I, I, I appreciate you letting me know. But yes, they can. Well, and I know with some people, we hit a <laughs> misunderstanding. Yeah, with some people, we hit a misunderstanding here because they assume that a crime has been committed. But in a missing persons case, that is not the assumption. So uh, there has to be, a, what is it, um, circumstances that go, you know, um, you know, suspicious circumstances. Yes. Things like that. Because a, a person has the right to go missing. I can right. be like, wow, I can do that. But yeah. if there's something that says, you know, um, uh, he he's with somebody that, hold, that was holding the back of his shirt the whole time with a ski mask on. Uh, maybe we need to look into that. Right. Well, let's go look into that. They'll go find them, do a safety check, and they don't report back to that fallen person with at least with at least their activity, current location. Da, da, da. They mm -hmm. go and they do a safety check on that person when they find them and locate. Them. Yep. Yep. I, mean, uh, I don't. I didn't know fully then, but I had a general idea. Yeah. No, I gotcha. Uh, I know that you were arrested on July 22nd and on the vanished podcast, you were very clear that you weren't driving when they came up on you. Uh, and you, would, yeah, yeah and you were thinking driving, that though. the they, charge, they driving. right. You were thinking that the charge shouldn't have even really have been valid. However, yeah, it definitely wasn't. Uh, shouldn't have been. No. However, when even I've seen it addressed or attempted to be addressed before, there was a major back and forth, back and forth going on between Catoosa County and, uh, court correction forms in the DDS in the state of Georgia. And that's genuine truth. There are forms online. Well, no, actually I had to take the page offline because it kept getting kicked offline because people trying to, anyways, uh, I have the documentation. So didn't um, you, court, court correction letters had DDS, uh, the Catoosa County court sent one down to the DDS for them to correct my license. Guess why they didn't? Because they didn't have a fax cover sheet. Gen <laughs> I swear, I kid you not. I had both times that were sent. Wow. Like I had to go back. You know how I found out that it wasn't fixed? I got pulled over again. 
Right. In the yeah. state of Georgia, do you have an option for going, hey, they fixed that yesterday, sir. We don't care. You're going to have to tell that magistrate. You must go to jail every single time. Right. You cannot show that license in a little bill. So I'm like, back in front of the same judge, I was like, yeah, man, I thought y'all had fixed that. He's like, well, I thought we did. I'm like, well, guess how I had to find out. Yeah. And back and forth like that, points of uh, accumulating on my license. So I what happened? To address to that. What happened with that charge in particular on July 20, 22nd? I think, well, hold on. Uh, I can look it up if you need me to. I'm quite sure almost every, I've never been convicted. Off the top of my head, I am not remembering any driving on suspended charge I've ever been convicted of. Okay, so they held you I for... I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe there's one, because I know it's happened several times. Okay, so they held you for almost like two weeks in that case. But which, ultimate, which one? Which one? Which it, case? For July 22nd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, it gets dropped, or it doesn't... Are you found not guilty? I, I, uh, I'll have to look at that paper. That's all right. That's all right. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it got, um, I had my license when I went, I think, to those hearings. And what happens then is they'll uh, it, they'll dismiss the license part and they want to see proof of insurance. And blah, 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 blah. Okay. And you usually get court costs and stuff like that in those scenarios. Pretty much. Yeah. Take it. That's how it goes. Okay. All right. I believe that's how that went. Okay. Quite sure it did. I know. And look, I, I know, man, you've, you've had a little bit of a history. You, so I, I know that. With my license, yeah, but I'm, I'm still yeah. like, qualified to look for him. Man. Yeah. Uh, when Noah came and got the keys, the wallet, the cell phone, uh, what was the plan with your truck? Did you actually tell him something specifically to do with it just or just go get it, get take it home? or Take it home. Just take it home? I didn't say that he couldn't drive it, but. Um, that's not a good area. That little Matco, that's a pretty popping little business district. And I mean, I was leaving a bookstore. Yeah. I just left the bookstore. I, I read books from time to time. Some law books, mostly what I actually get from there, believe it or not. Use mm -hmm. law books. Can't beat that. Yeah. And uh, the prices were new. <laughs> oh, man. Um, anyways, that's exactly what I was doing. And they have one of the best, like in the entire state, McKay's does, actually. And I was leaving from there. And, um, that's what happened. But at nighttime, there's criminals everywhere, right? It's right there in that one spot. It's very bad. The hotels are empty during the daytime. Yeah. But at nighttime, they're all occupied with popping CEOs in their, you know. Gotcha. So you wanted him to go get your truck out of that situation so nothing bad would happen to it. But it would have been okay if he wanted to use your truck for anything. But he didn't have a license at this point either, right? I don't know that answer. I got, I got. I was trying to look that up earlier. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, well, you know, sometimes uh, apparently when I'm checking right now, um, uh, I will be able to. I feel confident about check 100 percent into these things after a next hearing. I have to come up. Last time I had something set up officially for him, I got uh, you know apparently a wag of the finger of being criminal like. So I had to back off. I better not look at that right now. I better not go to the DDS website and ask that question right now. Huh. I better get some clarification from these judges really quick. Okay. Gotcha. Because the only way you can really check is to kind of, I mean, I'm quite sure that he had a driver's license. Yeah. Okay. I know every time when he would get released, he would only have a state ID in the form of something like, like right. that. Uh, but yes, partially in the shot, but yeah, that jail thing. And those are actually valid state form of identification with a picture on it. Right. Department of corrections ID. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, so, so there wasn't any other specific instructions that you gave him about what to do with your truck or your phone or your wallet or anything. Just get the truck, get it home. That's it. No, no. Um, I'd seen thing. I don't like addressing stuff all the time, but, um, you know, people thought about, I knew I had no bond. <laughs> there, was, there wasn't a rush in any way on that page. I wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was not going to go. It's, there was no bond. Um, some people would think and thought that I was trying to sell the truck off or have him sell the truck off and mix her prescriptions and or any goodies on the inside. I don't know. I've never seen a potential municipal violation bond that would require an automobile be sold and uh, all these things. You pay 10% of whatever that might be. Like, okay, right. man, he's got a good traffic ticket. Yeah. Make sure he sells his whole car to get out of this traffic. That doesn't. That's not how it works. Man. Yeah, it doesn't seem quite right. There was a bond set, I believe, though. There, yeah, yeah, it um, was for on on. Well, when there's one hold, this city, Collegedale, said he can't leave yet. 
Oh, okay. My charges had bonds, but guess what? He can't leave yet. That's how it works. Gotcha. That that agency has ten days. I think ten or eleven days to act on that. Yeah. I, I worked in booking for four of my corrections uh, years up here at the, at the actual the private sister jail up here silverdale yeah is where i worked at and they both operate like they're separate entities technically they're both hamilton county facilities anyways uh booking is a very similar of course as you can guess process and we work back and forth drive back and forth da, 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 da. also how i found out that i had no bond quite what are you doing here right come here for a second man what can i do to help you yeah they let me know quite quickly when i walked in for obvious reasons Yes. Oh man, it's like you got an old college deal. What can we? You know, they were trying to help me, and I, I learned of that pretty quick. Um, you have eleven days to get picked up, or you're not gonna. Actually, they will release you if you're not picked up after eleven days. Okay. It might be a little bit higher number, might be a little bit lower, but I'm quite sure it used to be eleven days. Did Noah have a cell phone of his own? No. No, he would have. He would have one that would usually like um. Uh, hey man, can I use this or, or whatever on Wi Fi or whatever? Yeah, you could. No, I, okay. I guess ideally. Yeah, sure. Gotcha. I mean, it's all neat. Cool. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and it could be gone. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and you've been clear that, yeah, there is, you, you've heard the critics talk about that you told him That's to. It's so weird saying I have critics. <laughs> I know. I just, weird to me. I'm, I'm trying to not use their names because I'm worried about people backlashing on them. And there's been enough backlashing all around this. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of be respectful to everyone here. My whole thing is I'm defending my integrity. I don't really care about proving myself rightly. Yeah. There is no, um, I think I said in one email to you, maybe I think it was, or whatever. It's uh, sometimes you'll realize that people know enough or they'll, or they'll think they know enough. Uh, that Neil deGrasse Tyson quote, you know. Yeah, uh, they know what. They, well, I can't say it right. I don't know. I look at it like that now because I tried to help them. I tried to help them, and I knew they didn't like me. Yeah, I was out of their little group quite quickly because if you want to be out of that group, give it a shot. Say right. something nice about me. And <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird. I don't know how they. No one can. Yeah. You no, know, I, I don't know. Anyways, you'll be you'll be gone quite quickly. Anyhow, well, um, speaking of you know, speaking of on that. Um, one of the big points of contention that was brought up to me by these people, it was literally in the first paragraph of the first email that I got from them way back in the middle of February. Uh, it came up again. Yeah, yeah. It came up again uh, in an email from someone else uh, in like their top. I asked them for their top points of why do we think that there's something weird going on here? And this thing kept coming up that you weren't in jail all the way until August oh, 7th. Man. Yeah. Uh, and it seems to be a cornerstone of their conversation because they want to make sure that there is some opportunity that you had to do something to Noah if that's kind of where they're aiming in terms of what they believe. Uh, so I did ask you one question uh, in email and I just asked you for, hey, can you send me some paperwork that shows when you got out of jail? You did. Uh, that They're paperwork was it all. Yeah, that paperwork was also given to Danielle. She featured it in her piece as well. Uh, and like I was talking to you, I, was I went and got him again. Yeah, yeah, he went and got, he literally went and drove and got it again, specifically for Danielle. With uh, handwriting. Yeah. yeah, with handwriting on it. But on top of all that, uh, I went one further, and I had heard from these people that they could not get it verified. It took me all of five minutes. Yeah. Oh, still probably. Uh, it can't be because they have those blinders, man. I'm trying to. It, tell it's you. so weird because it literally. It's not weird. I called. I, I called the county, um, the court reporting system. I talked to them about it. I said, "Hey, how can I verify this?" They said, "Hey, call this number. Uh, you're going to need his name, his birth date, the date of his arrest." They didn't even ask who I was. Yeah, they're they're, they're quite awesome down there. Honestly, they're really and, really and helpful. Yeah, look at me, it's a little bit funny. And I'm like, uh, when I'm calling, I've called a couple times. They're like. But it says you get out on this date. What is the problem? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> right, what, right. What, what do you want me to do? Like, put my yeah. drop of blood? That's what they said. They said, do you want me to sign it and put a little bit of drop of blood on there? Well, maybe we'll do it like that and have some wax and we'll just do it to press down and we'll have a good seal on there. And nobody's going to debate that ever. If we have an officer saying, you know, whatever. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I guess they'll still argue. Yeah. So without a doubt. No doubt whatsoever, we know he's in jail all the way up until August 7th. Now, of course, the conversation's yeah, going to move. Vacation, man. Yeah, I was going yeah. sad that it was what Be it was. Because I believe that we're dealing with a very strong belief system here, 
Uh, now the conversation is going to move to August 7th and what happened on August 7th. So I have a couple questions for you where I want to go through August 7th, and then we're going to end this interview. We will continue with another interview where we get much more into the phone, much more into the truck. But for this interview, August 7th happens. Uh, you're released from jail. About what time in the day are you released from jail? Uh, it seemed like um, just before business end close. Yeah, get out with no watch. Uh, okay. Family dollar stores and things of that nature were open, and I was able to walk, and I still smoked at the time and purchased. I had money. Somehow uh -huh. still a little bit of money left. Give me some cigarettes, walk around, Tennessee Riverfront, beautiful day when you're out of jail, waiting on your ride. Okay. So hold on a second. You, you turned your stuff over to Noah, uh -huh. but you wound up with some money still left? Yeah. Is yeah. that the discrepancy between the $80 and the $60 that are on the form? Possibly. Possibly. I'm not really sure what that happened. I know there was some sort of, uh, <laughs> oh man, it sounds sort of chain gang right now. Um, some sort of debate about a pillow. They said my pillow was tore or something like that. Uh -oh. <laughs> they tried to take it out of my account or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they actually charged. I remember them trying and deducting, and I said, I got a receipt for a torn pillow while I was asleep on the pillow. Wow. I was like, man, this pillow's torn. It's got a case on it. I'm like, this pillow's torn. I'm like, yeah, man, it is. And uh, you just bought it. And I was like, yeah, I can leave with it then. That's crazy. And I apparently bought the house where it's a true story. Did you take <laughs> and it? I was like, and I finally I asked the chaplain, I was like, hey, man, I got charged for this pillow, and I can't even take it home. That's even weirder. And I didn't do anything to it. Yeah. Oh, let me fix it. They said, so, yeah, that actually happened. I got, <laughs> I'm a pillow. I'm apparently a pillow tearing guy too. Yeah. yeah. So, so you get out, you're walking and you go buy a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. And we think this you is can't in the, talk and walk on your mobile wood, all that kind of thing. You yeah. don't really have that. No one picked mine up. Remember? Right. So you had no phone. Uh, no, so I was able to walk by the uh, same one. You get your free uh, call thing on, and they let you do the same thing on the out. Uh, again, they're very nice to me. I've never yeah. had any. It's uh, just the circumstances that are bad. They're not the people that know uh, yeah. anything bad there. Uh, they let you do it on the way out. Uh, Rick, I guess you're coming. Couldn't reach no. Uh, I really couldn't. I tried. Uh, yep, I'm away. Okay. Right. So you call up Uncle Rick, and Uncle Rick comes to get you. Yeah, he'll always answer that phone, boy. I call him right now and answer. Um, did you try calling your own cell phone first? Why? To get Noah? No, um, actually, it wouldn't call my it, Google Voice. Would not um, from those phones for some reason. Okay. I don't know. Oh, I know why. Because technically, at that time, I don't know if you still can or not. I done it once on one of these suspended license moments. You can go in, log in your voicemail when uh, your voicemail picks up, and uh -huh. dial out from your voicemail, and it'll. If I called you, it'll say Josh Wright's calling John, uh, okay. not Jill. You know, help, Jill, don't answer this. Like, you know, all, all you wish it said. It was a, hey, Josh is kind of cool. What's up? Help me. Yeah. Help. Oh, no, you're stuck then. Kind of, yep. And gotcha. uh, that, you, get, you can do multiple calls. <laughs> so you had. Like they stopped it, yeah. You did not have an expectation that Noah was supposed to come pick you up. A younger brother moment. You know, oh, can't reach him. That's a shocker. But I didn't think he was out. You know, Napoleon Bonaparte or nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, Uncle Rick Nothing's comes. That crazy is going on. Yeah. Uncle Rick comes and gets you. And at least according to information I've heard from you before, uh, at, stated by you, not from you directly, uh, you say that Uncle Rick tells you that Noah has been missing, like in the middle of the drive. And you were kind missing, of shocked. He didn't say the word missing. He just, you know, I don't know. We can't see him. We ain't seen him go today. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. Everything I love him to this. Everything he says sounds like negative. Uh, he probably dropped me off when he did and went back down to see anybody on his drive back down this dead end street. How did he go pick Josh up, man? I got what? What what Rick? Is it like that? All that everything gets turned into a toned down statement that way. Gotcha. And again, I don't know if he means it in harm uh, like it is how it sounds, but Right. Oh, no, right. no one's out raising or ra running the roads, man. I remember him saying that. He said that. Oh, he's been out running the roads. Nobody knows where he's at, man. I'm like, hmm. whoa, what? And he tried to keep going. And something like, Rick, Rick, Rick. What? Yeah. You know, I had that moment with him. I do remember on the way home. So how far is the drive from the jail to your back to your home? 13, 14 minutes. Okay. You get there and you don't see your truck. Yeah. Okay. And what happens at that point? I see my daughter first. Okay. I go in there and I'm like, oh, man. All right. uh, my mom was up there, I think you can too. And 
I missed her too. Checked on her, asked where she's feeling, whatever. Blah blah blah. You know, I'm home. Give me food, please, Mona. That happened, and uh, you know, then Raymond's boy. The Raymond vacation is uh, a little hard on you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and during that time, I planned on it. I did ask. All right, so what's going on with that? What's going on with Noah? Can we reach him? Is he answering the phone? And pretty much got all I needed to know that way. Okay. So you're eating. You you literally have a meal. You hang out with your daughter yeah. for a bit. Yeah. You start asking. And do you start sending Facebook messages at this point? Is this where the Facebook timeline kind of clicks in? Or? I had no laptop. I didn't have any, um, uh, no phone. I mean, I'm going back. Yeah. I'm in quantum leap mode. Let me close my eyes. <laughs> um, I don't know of any other method that I could have been doing that type of thing. I know Rick had a phone and my mom had a phone. Who, who knows if I might have said, can I borrow it for a second and do this stupid, annoying flip phone, log into Facebook on a flip phone. Yeah. I think my mom. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, probably wasn't doing much. No. Okay. So when do you decide, do you go searching for him yourself or do you call the police right away or what's, how do we get to that? How do we get to the police I'll looking mom for him? First about it? Because again, I don't believe um, anything extreme or, fatal or non uh you know it seems like a party foul that's yeah. like dude just come home and whammy on this kid and he's never been more than that bad and the level of being addressed by any of us really i guess or whatever he's never done anything where we want to really get the guy or anything i don't know okay. i don't know how he managed to get away with being that kind of slick but, you know <laughs> he had had some serious moments in his life but we still wanted to see him yeah you know, so yeah, and so um, even as just as I was in making that happen in an official capacity like that, um, I talked to mom for, and she could have talked me out of it, and she had it in her eyes. But I also, you know, well, mom, we need. I needed to get her to the doctor. Too. I mean, like she usually went about once every two days. Yeah, and so mom was even like, I, I'll be able to. Well, no, mom, no, I am that person. I'm got. This is me being that guy right there because I will make sure you get to that doctor, mom. I know you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Noah's fine. Everything's going to be good. He's not going to go to jail. My my truck will be back home. So everything's going to be fine. Just lay down, get some sleep. Okay. Now, when you call in the, the at least the stolen truck report, you do say it's stolen, right? Your truck's been stolen. I didn't call in a stolen truck report. I said I needed a, an officer to come to our address and okay. to discuss the matter. He came there. He takes his notes. He gets his. He tells me that you know, like that's what you're supposed to do. Like this sounds like probably right for your moment. I have my lap. Yeah, that's what the charge is. The statute in Georgia says that this is black or whatever. And so, in order to do this, you know, the prerequisites have to be in place, and the definition of the crime has to occur, and yada yada yada. Um, he tells me what has happened here. You have a theft of vehicle and a missing person report, Mr. Wright. Is that whatever? Is that, am I understanding correctly? You know, that's pretty much what he did. He was not nice that day. Okay. And my mom was talking with him. Hey, yeah, we don't want to do it. We got to catch him. And by the way, I will remind you, and I don't think I've ever said it, the police department, especially the road patrolling police department, they know who Noah is just as much as they know who I am. Okay. Noah was in and out of there like he was – I, I seen I seen him get uh, arrested one time so quick he was back in his same job at the jail where I went to visit him. He was cleaning the outside garden and he had planted all the things in the garden. I was like, no, you just made his back that bad going in his garden. Wow. I'm telling you, that's at some time, though. This was not a recent at that time, but Noel was, was just as known as you would think I am. Yeah. Not everybody felt like it was infamy, but they know you know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, some of the details on the um, on the stolen vehicle report are kind of interesting. Did you t tell him that he might have syringes with him? Uh, no. He asked about, um, you know, what's his history? And you tell him you're his history because you don't lie. Yeah. Because you know why? He could have gotten pulled over, found him, and found the truck, and where's all these syringes doing in here? And I'm like, well, they're not mine. Well, you never said he could have had that. You know, they could do gotcha. something like that. Yeah. And that there was some type of pepper spray that was in the vehicle also? Was oh, that yeah, yours? I always, have, I always have pepper spray, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want to hurt nobody. I, I, I carry too. Now, yeah. I don't. I hate that. I hate guns, but I will use it. But yeah. I don't want to. And preferably 90% of my time away from work, I have my child with me. I'd much rather go, 
and let somebody's face burn for a minute while I get away with my kids shot free. Right. Yeah. Right. So I've legally been trained on how to use it. Yeah. Okay. Like old dog the bounty hunter size. Like I yeah, he would have on his thigh. That's a Mark Nine of uh Odeo resin capsicum. It's all natural ingredients. Yep. Yep. All so right. it's that's what I prefer to use other than a firearm, you know. So when you left jail until the point where you have a police officer sitting in front of you talking about what they're going to do in terms of filing these reports, how much time are we talking about? He, he never left the driveway. He had, to, like I said, the plastic cover on his drill cap and all that. Yeah, I just, I just mean the gap. How much time from when you actually leave the prison to when you're talking to a cop I never again? Never in prison. Or, sorry, when you when you leave jail. To the point where you're talking to the police officer about Noah being missing. How much time are we talking about in there? Like four hours? Oh, um, good question. Enough time to eat, sit down, talk. What are we good? Are we good? Was this what we want to do? Put a plan together, that type of thing, do it. And we weren't in a hurry. We would not have a reason to be in a hurry. Well, you need to. No, we wouldn't care. We didn't think anything had happened to him. Yeah, because we we know that it's five twenty when that report is being called in. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, I don't remember that being the time. Is it the time? I don't know. Yeah. I don't have it in front of me, so okay. Yeah. Um, I think that our mentality was, I bet you, just from that number, Harriet, business has closed. What we wanted was a way to show Noah. We got, look what, card. Remember I took the picture of that card? I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, I took a picture of his business card with his yeah. handwritten name on it, Officer Pry on it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that was so I could send it to Noah Messenger. Oh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. You know, that's all I want to do. I'm like, yes, that works. When he walks in or drives home, you know. So Sometimes knowing- I get somebody home, well, especially him, I believe on probation. I mean, of course he was on probation. He has a warrant. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that usually works. <laughs> right. So knowing that is at about 520, can you backtrack from that point and tell me about how much time we're talking about in between there? I have no idea when I got out, especially myself. I don't. So I don't know of any way of. Do you Other remember if you had lunch that day? I computer and seeing logins and stuff for myself. I'm sorry? Did you have lunch that day in jail before you got out? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I mean, you're kind of moved out of your – I was in a dorm because I was there for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Brought back downstairs, and there's multiple stories in that place, and you sit in the same old cell you're in for a couple of days. And I can't remember – and usually I don't think I did eat that day because – Oh, you're getting out, ain't you? Is the thing. Okay. And you know, yeah, I'm getting out. I give it to you. Okay. That's not. That's just being respect. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to tighten it up. When I'm out yeah. Here. I'm just trying that's to tighten more, up the time frame not? there, because I want to, you know, try to understand what type of opportunity did you have to do something here? Because let me tell you. Oh yeah. If let if me you remind you of this though, I've done that myself. Like, what could I know. that possibly assume? Like. He gets out. He's got, I pretty much got out like completely naked, and they think I started flying around the world and all these things. I had no phone, no car, right? No idea what's right. going on, and um, apparently have located, I guess, through Spidey sense, spun around the world or whatever with the web, located him successfully to this very day, not gotten caught. At you know, why well, there's not enough time in the world to do anything like that. That's insanity. Like there was my personal feelings on everything at the, right now, even is there was not one single entity going on here. There was, you know, and so uh, doing all these things with no uh, mobility, no way of being notified, given permission to do something as big as a uh, abduct or hold on to somebody. It's big. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I don't know the time frame. Maybe I can follow back up with you on, uh, or sit here and look silly on the computer while we stare at it. No, it, it might I'm be something that it might be something that you want to add to your own timeline that's on sure. the website, if nothing else. I never care enough about that timeline to constantly update it as much, but I might do that actually. Yeah, it might not be yeah, a bad yeah. idea. Because honestly, I the opportunity the, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. yeah. The opportunity is what I'm really interested in here. Because if people really want to think that you're related to this case in some way, there has to be a window of opportunity or we have Air, to, ability, opportunity, jeopardy. I remember those keywords. You have yeah. to have them all in place to justify to shoot somebody, I think. Yeah. Those are words right there have to be in place. And, get, and even in that logic, trying to apply it here, did I have the ability to get anywhere? Right. Did I have the ability to get notified? Did I have an opportunity? Right. 
like <laughs> who knows? There are too many variables in place to say anything could have possibly happened like that. Yeah. I seriously doubt that a comic book could be written with such <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I hear you. Concluded so well that I'm still here right now, getting attention for what would be apparently myself. That's just wow. Marvel couldn't write one like that. Yeah, that is an interesting aspect to this case as well. And um, insulting, though. I have to mention that. Like, it, yes. it makes me want to get angry, but I don't. I mean, yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that. One of the things I try to encourage family members that have missing loved ones to do is to reach out and to raise attention and to try to keep their that face out there, that those vital statistics. This whole time we've been talking, Noah's face is literally right under the image of me. His, his face is right there Why the whole time. Uh, that's a major part of trying to help with these cases. You have to know who you're yeah. looking for. So, um, yeah, I've, I've kind of almost done. So, yeah, yeah, I do that too. All, as much as I can. Yeah. The reason why I'm trying to redesign the thing from time to time, even because I do try to keep it. You know, I know what that is. You see a t-shirt walk by, they know yeah. it's nose, but or whatever. But uh, yeah, man, I've I've had to keep it out there myself as best as I can. So I've totally gotten that. Now I've. I would have guessed this would be a smart way of going about it, but there are these families do have some great tools yeah. in place that they I know they can't know about beforehand. Mm -hmm. It takes people with experience, unfortunately, to let them know that you can do certain things online now. With uh, yeah, like, like right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to keep an eye on people trying to take over investigations from from, from families and people in play. I'm just gonna do that. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like people are very vulnerable in that state. So yeah, absolutely. Th this is not in the handbook. Yeah. We don't have a handbook. We just want people to come home, and we need our you know our hug circle to be completed. Yeah, you know, I hear it's you. It's our Josh. family. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to wrap up this episode at that point, Joshua. Thank you so much for your time. We are going to. Yeah. Bow on it. Awesome. Um, we are going to put My the bow on it in this episode and we will have you back for more, uh, probably another hour at least. Uh, we're going to get into the phone. We're going to get into the truck. We're going to see if we can put some more of these things to rest, help clear Man, the air. Me. Yeah. We're going to try to clear the air around all this. That is it for today's interview with Joshua Wright. Thank you so much for your time, Josh. Um, if you have any information about this case, please use the contact information below. Get that information in the right hands, people that can act on it, hopefully help move this case forward. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the phone, the truck, and does Joshua actually have any potential motive in all this with, with the theories that we're kind of hearing around? So be sure to come back to the Lord and Arts channel tomorrow. We'll be here with much more. Take care. <laughs>